Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're gonna talk about anime. We're gonna talk about Kiss anime and what could potentially be a replacement, not just for Kiss anime, but also for Crunchyroll and Funimation. Is that right? We're gonna talk about that. We've had a bunch of people who have uh, written us, uh, you know, talking about this new free anime channel on YouTube that supposedly is, is a bunch of the top anime studios doing their own thing, putting content out there for free on YouTube in the uh, the wake of Kiss Anime's demise. Now, disclaimer, you can go find a thousand other uh, piracy sites if you're so inclined. They're like hydras. They keep popping up. You take one down, there's a hundred more that pop up uh, almost overnight. But it was a big deal for Kiss Anime to be taken down because it was, I believe, the biggest and uh, certainly one of the most well-known and, you know, it has been a thorn in the side of animation studios and uh, dub companies for distributors for quite some time. So we're going to talk about that situation. We're going to talk about the situation with Crunchyroll and kind of maybe where all this is, is going. Go out to clownfishtv.com. We have a brand new website where all of our videos from all of our channels are posted and you can subscribe to notifications. So if you're not getting the notifications on YouTube, and a lot of you aren't getting the notifications on YouTube, thank you, YouTube, for that, you can get the notifications on the website, through the website. And uh, everything we post on YouTube does get mirrored over there. So that is clownfishtv.com and give us a sub on YouTube. It helps the channel immensely. A lot of you keep getting unsubbed again. Thank you, YouTube, for that. So. There's been a lot of discussion about this, and it's it's weird because this story has been out there for a while. This uh, new uh, streaming service, Anime Log, that's going to be a joint effort between multiple Japanese animation studios. It was actually out uh, a week or two ago on Animation Magazine, and I think it's it's been in some of the Japanese publications before that. Now, here's, here's the thing. This has been a, a topic of discussion in Japan for quite some time. You know, piracy and uh, payment, I guess. You know, uh, anime and manga being pirated by sites like Kiss Anime, which, uh, you know, regardless of how you feel about it, it does cut into the bottom line of, of many uh, studios and many manga creators. And also... You know, beyond the money, the um, the censorship issue. A lot of anime may not make it to the West now because of the increased focus on censorship. Uh, that has has come up time and time and time again with series like Interspecies Reviewers, and now we're seeing over in Australia they're even banning light novels of relatively tame works like No Game, No Life, and. Sony is supposedly looking at buying Crunchyroll. If they buy Crunchyroll, they have Crunchyroll and Funimation, and they pretty much have anime distribution in the West locked down. And I have to wonder if Kiss Anime getting gone when it got gone wasn't partially uh, because of some behind the scenes stuff you know, in regards to that. And we know that Sony is censorship happy. Uh, we know that they're, they're censorship happy. And they've been, you know, censoring a lot of uh, Japanese style video games. And, you know, so there is a lot of concern from Western anime fans that what Sony gives us, should they wind up uh, basically owning the whole enchilada, is going to be um, very middle of the road, very watered down. And I guess, I guess the more, the more lewd stuff, the more lewd stuff is going to stay in Japan. But you know what? I grew up in the 80s, 90s, and, and we got very little. Uh, we got very little anime over here. Not that I'm saying that it's okay, but I'm just saying we, we dealt with it. <laughs> you know, we dealt with it. And a lot of times when some of those shows made it over here, they were they were uh, given the four kids treatment, right? So let's talk about this. Uh, Kiss Anime's permanent shutdown gives way to YouTube's free anime channel, Anime Log. Um, this is coming from Tech Times. Tech Times. Uh, Kiss Anime's official shutdown brings forth a new free channel on YouTube. The sudden closure of the popular anime website was terrible news for many anime lovers. However, there's still good news that they should be looking forward to. Uh, currently, they're talking about uh, film piracy and anime piracy, and Kiss Anime and Kiss Manga helped lessen the gap between the West and East through subtitles and the fantasy world of Japanese animation. You can tell they don't write about anime very often. Uh, the two major anime platforms also served the global community for over a decade, 
However, the stricter Japanese copyright laws have officially closed both services on August 14th. I understand there's more to it than that, but that's a very, um, uh, a very uh, Cliff Notes version of of what happened. I believe there was more to it than that, that the laws don't actually kick in until later in the year or next year. Kiss Manga and Kiss Anime will be closed forever. Thank you for your supports. Thank you for those years, wrote the Kiss Anime support team. Uh, new websites started to surface after Kiss Anime's closure. I told you, I told you, claiming they have the official anime content from Kiss Manga and Kiss Anime. Udao's latest report warned that these websites should not be accessed since they are highly dangerous for users' devices and used for phishing purposes. Uh, you know, there's a lot of scammy sites out there when you go the the dark webs. More than 30 Japanese anime production companies have worked together to create a YouTube channel called Anime Log that will provide fans with free anime content. According to Bounding Into Comics, well, let's go over to Bounding Into Comics. Okay, here's the original article. According to Bounding Into Comics' latest report, the new channel holds licenses for content produced by Tezuka Productions, you know, Astro Boy, uh, Shin Ai, Shin Ai Animation, Doraemon, uh, Crayon Shin, Nippon Animation, and of, and of the Green Gables, and of the Green Gables, and Toy Digimon One Piece. The organization's goal is to reach insurmountable views monthly. But this is, I, this is in, barely in English. Let's go back to Bounding in the Comics. We'll just go to Bounding in the Comics. All right, so there are 30 Japanese animation studios joining forces to launch Anime Log. This will be a new YouTube channel that will allow users to stream various anime titles free of charge. So they're talking about it on Twitter. According to the official channel description, Anime Log will distribute the series officially licensed from over 30 companies with the aim to carefully select and deliver family animation. Family animation and nostalgic masterpiece animation. So this is not everything and this is we got to be clear about this this is uh um select titles this i don't know there's been a lot of talk about this possibly killing uh crunchy roll and funimation off and i i i'm, I'm being honest i don't know if that's going to happen and we're, we're, we'll talk about that because there's there's big money in current current animation that's especially not family family friendly the channel currently holds licenses for Doraemon, Crayon Shin, Tezuka Productions, and Anne of Green Gables, um, which we actually have a not quite legal DVD of. Um, it's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty good. Uh, going forward, Anime Log will also host series from studios including Kodansha, Ghost in the Shell. They're going to get case closed. Pokemon and Toy is going to have Dragon Ball and One Piece. Uh, Anime Log states it will also be free of censorship. The channel, well, yeah, good luck with that. You're on YouTube, right? Good luck with that. Because I, I don't I don't think YouTube is gonna allow the more extreme content. So that's that's the thing. They're gonna put this stuff on YouTube, but YouTube is actually more strict with censorship, I think, than a lot of the anime streaming services are. But hey, if they can figure out a way to, to, to do a workaround, more power to them. The channel notes some of the work may be expressively inappropriate. The channel also intends to respect the historical background of the work when it was announced, the historical value of the work and have no discriminatory intention at all. So we're delivering as it was. Uh, series currently available for streaming include Blackjack, Future Boy Conan, and Lucy of the Southern Rainbow. By 2022, the channel does hope to have 3000 separate titles for users to enjoy. They're currently region restricted and available only to Japanese viewers though the channel does plan to provide English and Chinese subtitle content in the future. The announcement of Anime Log's creation is welcome news for fans, many of which either live in areas where a series is not legally available or refuse to support the business practices of the Western anime industry. This is becoming more and more of a thing. The shutdown of popular pirate anime streaming sites like Kiss Anime has left some anime fans worried about accessing their favorite series. Does it really have a future on YouTube with its own history of censorship? That's my question. I don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, I think what's going to happen is that there's, there's definitely value in older titles. And that was one of the arguments I heard for Kiss Anime's existence was there's a lot of really obscure stuff out there that you, you couldn't get anywhere else. Um, there are a lot of older titles, etc. Now, there are more streaming services popping up that do offer free anime. And I, I know I keep talking about Retro Crush, but I freaking love it. I'm, I'm actually finding myself watching Retro Crush more than Funimation or Crunchyroll at this point. 
Uh, they've got a lot of classic titles. I mean, this is the anime I watched when I first got into anime. There's a lot of older stuff in there. Most of them they have uh, dubbed and subtitled. But, um, you know, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. It's For me, it's like taking a trip to Blockbuster Video in 1994. And I know I keep you know raving about it, but do yourself a huge favor and go out and check out RetroCrush.tv. It is 100% free so far with ads. And I think that's what they're looking at on YouTube with this other service is they're like, well, we'll monetize with ads and uh, we'll at least make something. I guess I guess the point of view is we'll at least make something off of older anime compared to it going up on a, a pirate site and we're not we're not getting anything. Now, the question is, will it become a, a crunchy roll or Funimation killer? And before we talk about this is what uh, Christoph McDonald from Anime News Network, uh, his hot take, what he had to say on it. I just want to point out that uh, a lot of people now are talking about the end of or potential end of crunchy roll. And we're gonna, that's gonna, the whole separate issue we have here because you know people are worried that Crunchyroll is going to end. And I remember we've been talking about this for about a year now because I had heard from some folks on the Warner side that Crunchyroll was basically being allowed to exist until HBO Max launched. And the original plan was to roll Crunchyroll into HBO Max to have it basically be a tab on HBO Max, and we know that this isn't unprecedented. We're seeing it now with Warner Media. They're they're shutting down, effectively shutting down DC Universe, and migrating all that content to HBO Max. And as I understand it, that was the original plan for Crunchyroll. Once Max launched, they were going to push all the anime content over the Max, like they have you know anime on Netflix. But now they're talking about you know the possibility of just selling Crunchyroll off entirely where the most likely buyer is Sony. And then at that point, they basically have have uh, anime streaming services in the West uh, locked down and you have to play ball with Sony and you get what you get. And uh, they do censor stuff. But Christoph McDonald from Anime News Network. Now, I've not always agreed with Christoph McDonald, especially when Anime News Network and their editors proceed to call us alt-right Yahtzees for literally no reason, because we were neutral on the Vic Mignogna situation. But I digress. He is uh, talking about other YouTubers who have talked about the situation. I think if you read between the lines, he's probably talking about Hirohei, that he's actually had problems with Hirohei uh, personally in the past. So here's his take on it. The anime Shoutmasters... Is that, is that going to be Hirohei's new title, Shoutmaster Hirohei? The anime Shoutmasters have jumped on a 10-day-old, relatively minor piece of news about a couple of Japanese licensors putting catalog content on YouTube and are loudly proclaiming this is because Japan is mad at Crunchyroll and Funimation and that Crunchyroll and Funny are finished. Well, I don't think they're, they're finished. I think there, there's a lot more to it, but it does show that uh, Japan is being more proactive because, again, my opinion is that there does seem to be a lot of talk about piracy, a lot of talk about censorship. Um, and I think what's going to escalate that is, you know, watching Australia go just batshit insane, censoring Japanese content. There is a lot of talk now over there about foreign standards, foreign standards dictating Japanese content. So it's very likely that the Japanese, you know, are probably working on backup plans uh, you know, but will they be as successful as Crunchyroll and Funimation? I don't think so. And this isn't really a streaming service. It is a channel on YouTube. And again, YouTube, you know, is pretty censor happy too. So it's, it's you know, the, the only way that they could actually win this, the Japanese, in my opinion, could actually win this is if they created their own streaming service completely run by the Japanese, completely translated by the Japanese. The Japanese go higher dub actors if they want to dub um and everything is hosted uh offshore and um that is that but uh you know the fact that they're they're using youtube and um you know they're saying that it is you know family friendly and archival content tells me it's not exactly the same kind of stuff that you're gonna see on on um funimation and crunchyroll but it is a start it, do, it does show that they're thinking about it. They're thinking that they, they need to stop putting all their eggs in the one basket. Now, the problem there is we could wind up with umpteen different anime streaming services too. So who knows? Like every, it could, it could just be like the US where every studio has got their own streaming services. But here we go. Christoph McDonald, Anime News Network. 
Anyway, it's really cool. This old catalog content is going to be freely available on YouTube. Again, it makes more sense than, than you know having it up on a piracy site. Uh, whatever legit platform it can be on, more anime, including catalog content, needs to be available worldwide to fans. But this is zero threat to Crunchyroll, Funimation, High Dive, or any other anime streaming platform out there. Uh, most of about all the content bring put on you being put on YouTube is content these platforms didn't try to license. Yeah, I don't think there's really they're really uh, hot for Anna Green Gables on uh, Funimation or Crunchyroll. I'm just saying this isn't even Japan. The guy and um, as if the Japanese anime industry was assumed to be some monolithic entity that acted in unison. The guy in charge is BJ Grubbs, BJ Grubbs, Benjamin Grubbs. Whether you love the idea of a united Japanese anime industry run site or hate the idea, fact is a few visionaries have tried it in the past and were never able to get anywhere near universal support from the Japanese industry. Um, he does talk about them being competitors too. And that is true. But I think what's going to unite them is a common enemy. Um, and it might not be this YouTube channel, but I think a day is coming when the Japanese are probably going to have to take matters into their own hands just because, you know, especially if you get Sony, you know, having having anime in the West basically on lockdown, if they own Crunchyroll and uh, Funimation, they're going to have to take things into their own hands. There definitely is a market there for it. I mean, there is a market. I think people would pay five or ten bucks a month for access to, you know, Japanese anime as it's produced, uh, translated without fear of of getting a third party involved that might have some political agenda uh, without fear of censorship just straight up it's it's from japan uh, to your tablet and there's no middleman i think people would totally be down with it so i think it's a matter of time again i don't think it's going to be this one per se but I, I do think it's a matter of time because the market is absolutely there uh, they said that they're they're competitors who usually put their own interests first the actual investors in the original daisuke still license their show to crunchyroll because crunchyroll paid more uh, about a decade ago, a Crunchyroll executive casually mentioned to an AJA exec they'd be willing to discuss selling Crunchyroll to the AJA or its members. I don't think that's ever been said publicly before. Obviously, nothing ever came of it. Crunchyroll wanted big money, and the AJA felt that if they wanted to throw around that kind of money, they could compete with Crunchyroll for only a third of it, but they never did. Uh, Japan could build their own streaming service now. You know, they could, but then I think they like that Hollywood money, too. And that's what's going on is, you know, Netflix is co-producing some of these shows and uh, Crunchyroll is producing, you know, co-producing some of these shows. But the Hollywood money is starting to dry up. Um, you know, Hollywood is in a major, major Hertzville right now. So, you know, the, the money is, is starting to dry up anyway. So I, I don't know what's going to happen to Crunchyroll. Um, I have no idea. But I do think that this is the first of many attempts that we will see for the Japanese to uh, try to do it on their own. Um, because again, you know, they don't need, they don't need American distributors. They don't need Funimation. They don't need Crunchyroll. They could build their own platform. And, uh, you know, I mean, look, you know, they don't need all these voice actors from Texas. They could just do it themselves. A lot of anime fans watch subtitled anime anyway, or they could just hire uh, English voice actors. You know, I mean, I've seen some laughably bad Japanese voice actors trying to do American roles. I'm not talking about that. Like, they've got the money. They could they could do it directly. But I think they like the Hollywood money. I mean, I think they do. I think they're they like the money coming from the U.S. because, again, it's it's a you know pretty cutthroat industry. The money is not great. And this is why, you know, speaking of Crunchyroll, this is why people are so pissed off about High Guardian Spice because all that money was supposed to go to the Japanese studios producing content the anime fans actually wanted versus producing High Guardian Spice, which looked like it was uh, some ultra woke Kickstarter thing, you know, and it still has yet to appear. We don't even know where this thing is, but uh, things are definitely going to change. But I think people just are in the habit now of paying your monthly bill and getting your anime and a lot of people are in the habit of just pirating anime and it's and i can see both sides of it i can see you know getting stuff that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get and it's not actually hurting the studios but you know having been a comic book creator in the past who's had their stuff pirated it doesn't help 
it doesn't help it you know just watching somebody's show on a pirate site doesn't help make more anime it actually hurts the industry because you know people aren't paying for it so it's got to be paid for somehow it's got to be paid for somehow i just have to wonder if japan isn't going to get tired of everything going on in the west get tired of what's going on with tencent god i i hope tencent doesn't wind up with crunchyroll but i've talked to some people who said that they don't think that's even possible because of the way the ccp works that they'd be able to cough up that kind of money but i could totally see japan you know again it's probably not going to be this this youtube thing but i could totally see them coming up with a solution to get the anime directly from japan to western consumers with minimal interference and maximum revenue for them then they don't have to share uh, i think it's coming very soon especially if crunchyroll gets gone somehow one way or another because uh, the demand is absolutely there so i'm gonna wrap this one up uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants and we will talk later hey guys thanks for watching clownfish tv please consider supporting the channel go to clownfishsupport.com that's clownfishsupport.com and if you want to join our community go to clownfishtalk.com that's clownfishtalk.com please subscribe ring the bell for notifications we will talk to you next time